Hi everyone, Professor Bergaster here. We're at our next video where we talk about how to take those extracted spectra we got in the last video and combine them to make one very high signal noise spectrum. Uh, so here's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be looking at how we bring up this next part of the spec tool package, XCOM spec. We're going to group our spectra by source name or coordinate, depending on what information we have. We'll see about scaling these spectra and then pruning any bad data that might be in them and then correcting for the spectral shape, which is very simple, and then saving off the file in a combined spectral file. So let's go ahead and remind ourselves that the data that we're looking at is from this 2003 May 21st data set. And we're gonna look at this first set of sources, our science target here and our calibrator star. These are the two spectra we're gonna uh, combine their individual spectra into two separate spectra, all right? Um, now, it's important to kind of organize yourself again when you get to the logs and just double check that these are definitely different sources and all these files are the same source. And you can see that really the best way to check is either the source name. And if someone's been careful, they have made sure to keep the source name consistent. But in case they forget, the, the telescope automatically saves the coordinate in which the person was observing. And so you can always double check that the coordinates are roughly the same. And it does change a little bit over the course of these observations but it's all the way down here at this very last decimal place, uh, last, last digits. And so these are not really significant differences. So these are definitely the same source. And similarly, these are all the same source, all right? So we're gonna be combining one through eight and nine through 14 to make one science spectrum and one calibrator spectrum. All right, so let's go back to our remote desktop here. Uh, we're gonna bring up our terminal window. I'm going to do this usual CD into reductions, 2000, oops, 2003, there we go. Um, bash and IDL to get into our environment there. And then I'm going to bring up this new command, which is X com spec, X combined spectra. Let me see, we get a new window here. And the first thing I'm going to do is going to set the path to point to our processed data folder. And you don't see anything in here right off because it's just not selecting them specifically. Um, but they're in there. We can trust that. Um, in fact, if we're not sure, we can always go back to our file folder here and look in that proc folder. And indeed, we got all of our spectral files. So that's what we want to combine. So as I mentioned, the first set we're going to combine is the files for the science target. And those were files one through eight. So I'll put that in the file numbers here. And I can just put the numbers because I've set this to be the index. And so it's using the spectra and then one through eight there. So if I load that up. And now you see there are multiple spectra of different colors and those correspond to the different extractions, the different individual spectra. So again, we want to combine these into making one spectra. For the first step, we're just going to scale these so they all overlap as best as we can. So I'm just going to cl click on this scale spectra and it brings me to a new window. Now, what's shown here is these blue lines are the regions in which uh, the software is taking the kind of median value and making sure all the spectra have basically the same median value. Now, you can play with this a little bit. Right now, this is actually probably pretty good. But for example, if I wanted to focus on just the brightest part of the spectra here, what I can do is I can click on the S key on my keyboard and then use my mouse and click on the left side and the right side of where I want it to scale. You can see it's changed a little bit, particularly it's kind of brought up this region a little bit. And that may or may not be good. And we'll actually fix this a little bit a little bit later on. Uh, but in general, if you have pretty high signal noise, you want to kind of use as much of the spectrum as possible. So it kind of averages everything out. So we'll stick with that. All right, so we'll accept that. The next step is to prune any bad uh, spectral pixels. And this can happen because maybe they, a cosmic ray hit the detector during the observation, or maybe the spectrum fell on one of the bad pixels on the detector. There's all kinds of reasons why individual um, you know, data points might be a little bit off, clearly off from the rest of the data. And if it's really off, we, we want to just really just ignore that data. We don't want to skew our noise by uh, introducing these just bad data sets. So we're going to click on this prune spectra thing. Now, in first glance, everything seems to line up pretty well. All eight of these spectra seem to line on top of each other fairly well. But if you look closely, you can see that occasionally there's a little few deviants. And the one I'd see for sure is down here, the array left side. Uh, it looks like there's a little bit deviant white pixel there. So I'm going to take the, um, I'm going to zoom in by clicking on the Z key for zoom, then clicking on the lower left and upper right corners. You can see a little box forms there. And indeed, when I zoom in, I can see that all the other spectra line 
on top of each other pretty well, but this one part of the white spectrum seems to be off. So to get rid of that, I'm gonna change the option here from plot to mask. You don't actually wanna remove, you're just masking the data. And I'm gonna select the first spectrum, all right, the white spectrum there. And again, using the S key, I'm gonna select on the left, click on the left, click on the right. And now that data is gone, or at least it's masked away. So it's not going to skew the results, all right? So I can continue to kind of hunt around, you know, maybe over here, it looks like, again, there's kind of a little bit of a peak here. Maybe I can correct it. It's pretty small. And this is kind of where you want to kind of use some um, judgment. If it's just a small deviation and you have eight spectrum, it's probably not going to affect the average overall. It's actually going to reject uh, some of the outliers in any case. But if it's a really big outlier, then you probably want to get rid of it. So I would say this is probably not significant enough. Um, I zoom into this region. Now, again, the white spectrum seems to be quite a bit off and consistently off here. So what I might do is, again, with the spectrum one selected, I might select that region and cut all of it out. Now everything else lines up very well. So, you know, this is where you want to use a little bit of judgment. Do this judiciously. Make sure you're just cutting out uh, when there's like one spectrum that's an outlier and only cut out those pieces that are outlined. You don't want to get rid of the whole spectrum. Um, but if there's a lot of noise and there's a lot of things that are going up and down, in that case, maybe you want to kind of leave everything and just let it average out. So use your judgment on that. Uh, if I use the W key, I zoom back out. And, you know, I'm sure there's probably some more cleaning I can do, but this is pretty good. This is pretty close. And the averaging is going to get rid of some of these variations anyways. So I'm going to accept that. All right. And now all I'm going to do is just click on this correct spectral shape. Now, I want to, one caveat here is you want to only use this if you have a really good signal noise spectrum. And this is a good signal noise spectrum because I can see all the features. They all seem to line up very well. This is just going to kind of correct for occasionally the spectrum has a little tilt to it because of the way the click data is collected. And this will kind of correct all that out. So in a good quality spectrum, we'll go ahead and do that. And you can see that things will just kind of tighten up in their alignment. And that's exactly what we want. All right. The last step then is to combine this um, and output it. So I'm going to introduce a new naming convention. I'm going to say this is ComSpec, Combine Spec. And I'm going to give the range of numbers, one through eight, for the files that I've combined. And if I just write file, then we've got a new spectrum. And if you remember from what the spectrum looked like before, this is actually quite a bit cleaner. In fact, if we look at the signal to noise, it's quite a bit high. It's about 200 at the peak. So that's pretty good. All right, let's combine the other spectrum, which is of their calibrator, 9 through 14. So I'll load that up. You can see that these are very different. I'll again scale the spectrum. In this case, almost all the light is over here on the left side. So I might go ahead and just select just this peak to scale. Didn't actually change very much, but there you go. Um, I'll accept that. I'll click on prune. And to be honest, I don't really see much to prune here. If I zoom in here, this little divot here is actually consistent with all the spectra. So that's not a bad pixel. That's a feature of the spectrum. So we want to keep it. So in fact, I don't really actually see anything needing to be pruned here. So I'll just accept that. And again, this is a very high signal to noise spectrum. So we'll correct the spectral shape, tightens it up a little bit. And then I'll change the name here to 9 to 14, write that out. And then we've got that spectrum. And signal noise is really high, like 1,000 for this one. So that's great. All right, so that's it. That's uh, the combined spectrum. Uh, our next step is going to be, I would say, the more comp most complicated part is we're going to start taking into account the telluric absorption in the spectra. Um, one thing to point out, uh, and I think I pointed out this in a previous video, is that these features that we see in the spectrum are actually features that are coming from our atmosphere. Like plot our atmospheric transmission, see how nicely our atmospheric transmission lines up with the spectrum. So our next step is going to be correcting for that, uh, and we'll see how to do that with the XTEL core function. See you next time.